Hey guys, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to learn about vector databases and how they are different from traditional DB. If you have followed recent news in the AI, which is large language model, chat GPT, and so on, you have heard about vector DB. So you may ask yourself how they are different from traditional databases and what are the use cases. In this video, you're going to learn about this and in practice, you are going to see about uh, embeddings. You are going to learn what are embeddings because embeddings and ve vector DBs are two related concepts. And I'm going to show you uh, one example from ChromoDB. That ChromoDB is a vector database that you will learn how to store and display your data, which are going to be embeddings. So let's jump in the video. Well, vector databases uh, is a kind of database that it is used uh, continuously in machine learning use cases. They are specialized for storage and retrieval of vector DB or embeddings. In the next slide, I'm going to tell you what are embeddings. So how they are different from the traditional database. Let's say in terms of the data in the traditional DB, you can store both structured and unstructured data. While in vector DB, you have to store vector, DB, vector data. In terms of the search in the traditional DB, you are having a predefined criteria for searching, for example, based on a specific field. Let's say if the credit card amount is more than $10,000, you are going to filter your data. While in VectorDB, you are going to search and find your data based on the similarity between the vectors or the context. So the use cases of VectorDB are in the machine learning and AI, for example, for image and video processing, for natural language processing, for large language models, and recommendation systems. In all of these use cases, we are talking about embeddings data that they are need to be stored and retrieved. So what are these embeddings? Embeddings practically is a kind of numerical representation of your data. The data type can be different, such as text, video, audio, and image. Why? Why we need to convert this kind of data into the numerical presentation? Because for computer, textual information or audio information, it's not understandable. So we have to convert these data type into the numerics. And when you have these numbers, you are easily be able to find what are similar uh, concepts to each other. Uh, and uh, for example, if uh, we want to create this kind of uh, numerical presentation, we have to use embedding functions. There are multiple uh, embeddings functions. Uh, for example, for text information, we can use word wag we can use GLOV, or we can use BERT. And also there are some, um, let's say models such as OpenAI, for example, that they have pre-trained embeddings as well. So you can use already a pre-trained embeddings and use it directly in your applications. So let me give you an example. This is a sentence. The dog is running on the hill. And through using embedding function or model, you can convert this into the numerical representation as a vector. So it is expected that if we have a similar sentence to this sentence, the numerical representation or the vector data is going to be really similar to each other. So through this way, you can find similar concepts that are close to each other. So what are the databases that we can use as a kind of vector DB? One of the common ones, which is open source, is called Chroma. It can be deployed on cloud or on-premise. And it is uh, optimized for use cases, for example, audio data. And it supports integration with various APIs and frameworks such as PyTorch or TensorFlow. Another example is Pinecone, that it is really famous. Uh, it's not open source, 
it is based on the cloud it's suitable for most of machine learning use cases and it has a really easy integration with cloud platform Elasticsearch, gpt models and so on then we have also milvis which is open source it supports the integration with frameworks such as pytorch and tensorflow and it is good for fast retrieval for similarity search in a large vectors so in this notebook we are going to you see what are embeddings and i'm going to use open ai embeddings which is a kind of pre-trained uh, embedding that can be used easily without the need of you to create your own type of data so here uh, in this notebook of course i'm uh, installing the open ai and then i'm importing open ai and of course you have to use all your open ai api key this is my key don't use it i'm going to delete it so you have to use your own key and uh, then we are reaching to the embeddings functions so here this is a function that you can use for getting the embeddings what you have to specify is the model that you want to get the embeddings from so for example here i'm using the ada002 which is a kind of uh, model that has its own kind of embeddings uh, there is also version one but there's also other types yet that you can use so here we are expecting an input as a text and as a result we are returning the embeddings so what i wanted to show you is that for example here you can specify the text or a word that you want to see the embeddings so for example here i have specified the dog and as you can see as the output we have a fixed vector with a different numerical representation the same this is for cat and i tried with banana so the vectors for dog and cat since they're both animals so i expect that in the vector space these two uh, vector data are having a low distance between themselves respect to banana so that's the part for the embedding so i hope that now you have a good understanding when we are talking about embeddings uh, what are them so here let's go to the chroma db this is a notebook that i got from the chroma db website i'm going to leave the link in the comments so there are some kind of explanation at the beginning about the embeddings and uh, the focus of this notebook uh, is on the creation of the embeddings and retrieval what it is good about chroma db is that uh, you can first install it locally so you don't need to host it on a specific service or cloud that's the good part and uh, chroma db automatically take care of uh, indexing uh, tokenizing and creation of the embeddings by itself automatically if you have your own kind of embeddings that's not a problem you can insert it directly also in the chroma db but if you don't have a kind of uh, this uh, embeddings don't worry chroma db is going to take care of it so here uh, well we are going to install first chroma db numpy and datasets Datasets is for the retrieval of a specific uh, data, which is a scientific data set uh, from Hugging Face. It includes around 14,000 crowdsourced science exam questions about physics, chemistry, biology, and so on. So the data set is having four multiple choice plus one questions, and each question is having a kind of additional paragraph with, uh, as a support that guide the students toward correct answer so what we are going to do and see in this uh, notebook is that we are going to insert the support data in the db so for getting the data uh, we are loading the data set we are uh, getting uh, splitting the data into the training and test and we are just getting the support data so we are leaving uh, the rest and uh, here the data set is having the dimension as around 10,481 uh, 
point records. So as the next, just to show you what data we are talking about. So here you can see that we are having first a questions and for multiple, uh, actually three multiple choices. Uh, I think in the description, I uh, read that there are four uh, multiple choice. But anyway, I think what they mean is that we have anyway, three multiple choice plus one correct answer. And then we have a support paragraph, which is guiding the students toward the correct answer. So how we can load this data in the ChromaDB? First, we need, of course, to import ChromaDB and then create a client. And uh, consider this day, at least in this way, that we are creating the client. We are not going to save it on the disk. So we need to create a collection in order to support the document that we would like to uh, store. And we don't need to specify any embedding functions. Uh, the default function is going to be used. So here, this is the way that we can add our data to the Chrome Mobi DB that, for example, we can specify IDs that it is ranging now from zero to 100. We are getting the data, source, data set support, uh, the first 100 records, and then you can specify metadata here. So the metadata that we are specifying here is that the support, the type for uh, the documents that we have, uh, it is support. You can specify other metadata. Metadata are going to be helpful when you would like to filter first some of your documents. So here, as I said, ChromaDB is going to take care of tokenizing, uh, creating embeddings, and also uh, the indexing. I, I, was, uh, I didn't uh, remember this part specifically. So in order to show you what are the embeddings that, uh, okay, let me run this cell. So in order to show you what are the embeddings that we are talking about, uh, let me go to this part that first look the questions that we have is, for example, the first, uh, uh, 10, the first 10 records is uh, having this kind of question. So in order to show you what are the data we are talking about. And in order to get the embeddings, uh, you have to specify the name of collection that you would like to use. So here, this is the name of collection that we have created above. And by using peak, we can first, uh, we can see the first 10 records of the database. So here, as you can see, we have the IDs that we have created above, and then we have the embeddings, which is added to the data that we ask to be inserted. As you can see, this is a really long data. Uh, so I'm not going toward the, all of the embeddings. Uh, so at the end, let me see if I can show you also at the end, the end of this data that you can see we have also the questions and the types. Here you go. We have the types and then the documents, which are the questions. So as you see, we have all of the information that we wanted to include that in a vector DB plus the embeddings. So in order to query your data, because uh, at the end, the objective is to find what are the most similar uh, for example, uh, text uh, to each other respect to the query that we have. So what we are giving as a kind of uh, query is the first 10 questions, and we want to retrieve just one answer. So we are querying the collection based on this data. We, here we have the results. And in order to show and compare what are the retrieved support for each question uh, here, we have uh, combined them together. So first we have the questions and then we have the retrieve support. So for example, as an, uh, to give you uh, one example, the question is that what is the least dangerous radioactive decay? And the retrieval support is that all radioactive decay is dangerous to living things, but alpha decay is the least dangerous. 
So here actually the support uh, of the question is giving the answer, but as you can see, they are totally relevant to each other. That's it guys. I hope you have learned in this video what are the vector DBs, what are embeddings, how they are different from the traditional databases, how you can use uh, practically in this example, in this tutorial, we have covered uh, Epic Chroma DB. I will leave in the comments the links to the documentations. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and see you soon.